Manta is the name of a flying coaster at SeaWorld Orlando. Ironic, huh? A sea creature that was made to fly. On top of this, it was my first ever B&M flying coaster experience. With that being said, this is going to be my full review of Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. Let's dive into it. Manta was manufactured by Bolliger and Mabillard, or B&M, as a flying coaster in 2009. The coaster is located at SeaWorld Orlando and is the first coaster that is seen when entering the park. From the entrance, if you go right, you can see the brake run, and if you go left, you get some truly stunning views of the attraction. As you walk to the entrance of the ride, you must walk around the finale for Manta, which is a nice big turn that has a water feature with it. As the trains whiz by, water shoots into the air from the pond. On the other side of the entrance, you must walk through the beginning of the ride, like the first drop and the lift hill. Basically, all of Manta is visible from pretty much everywhere, so that opens up some pretty nice photo opportunities. The entrance has a nice rock structure with the name Manta that must be passed under. Don't get confused with the entrance to the Jewel of the Sea, which is an aquarium very similar to the entrance. In fact, both the queue for Manta and the aquarium are very similar. As you progress through the line for Manta, you will notice a couple of things. The first being the most obvious, which is that the room is poorly lit. It will take a minute for your eyes to adjust. The second is that there is a manta ray exhibit. The third is that it is very cool within the queue. This makes it a very nice spot to get away from the hot Florida sun. But beware, being in there for a long period of time, it can get very cold. Once you get near the station, the line splits. This is to accommodate the dual load station. You're then at the platform and ready to ride. This dual load station does affect the operations for the coaster. For those that are unfamiliar, a dual load station is one that allows two trains to load and unload simultaneously. Manta usually runs three trains on a busy day. This complicates things that it is hard to enter and exit the same side of the station with an odd amount of trains. A couple of things can happen to ensure that mix-ups do not occur and ensure a healthy number of riders per hour. The first instance is that only one side of the station is operating to ensure that all trains go through one side. This would mean the coaster is probably running two trains and the park is not very crowded. Running one side does mean that the coaster's operations may not be as fast as they could be. The other option is to have both sides open, but making each train go through the same station every time. For example, train 1 and train 2 are in the station. Train 3 is waiting outside. Train 1 dispatches and train 3 enters that same spot. Then train 2 dispatches. Instead of train 1 filling train 2's spot in the station, it will wait for train 3 to leave. This does increase the throughput of the ride because of the extra train but the concept could be confusing to guests who are not wanting to wait, and in the end, frustrating them. It also creates another problem that will be discussed a little later on in the video. The trains seat four per row and have eight rows for a total of 32 riders per train. As you board your train, you pull down the vest restraints. You may notice at the same time that there are pads that lock your shins in place. This is so that your legs do not hit or drag on the ground in catwalks. The dispatches on the coaster did seem to take a long time. Before dispatching out of the station, the trains tilt from the sitting position to the flying position. This feels very different from the flying position on the older Vacoma Flying Dutchman coasters. On the B&M Flying coasters, the default position is flying, while the Vacoma version is laying on your back. You then leave the station, cruise through a merge track, and enter the lift hill. That brings us to the layout. The lift takes you to the tallest point of the ride, standing at 140 feet tall. The train crests the top of the lift and dives down the 113 foot drop, hitting the max speed of 56 miles per hour. You then enter a 98 foot tall pretzel loop. This is where the train rises and does a loop while the trains are facing the interior instead of the exterior. At the bottom is a long stretch of track so that it can finish the loop without colliding back into the upper track segment. When the train gets back to the top, it banks and turns to the right into the next element. Before I move on in the layout, I have to praise this loop. It is like nothing I've ever been on. Remember this is my first B&M flyer and most of them do feature this element. I'm sure that the highly praised models like Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain have a better and more intense loop. But man, this loop pulled so many G's. I was not expecting it. You feel the most G's as the train enters the bottom of the loop. It was unlike anything I had ever felt. It made me scream at the top of my lungs, which is how crazy it was. And I'm used to some pretty crazy coasters. For the rest of the layout, I could not stop laughing and smiling. Now by no means am I saying this is the best coaster I've ever been on. I just had a really good experience in this part of the element which carried over to the rest of the ride. Okay, back to the layout. Turning right out of the pretzel loop, you go straight into a heartline roll. Coming out of this inversion, you enter a swooping right hand turn. The train rises through the pretzel loop and enters a second heartline roll, but this time it is in the other direction. These parts have some pretty good forces to them. After this, you enter the mid-course brake run. 
Now the train enters the part that everyone sees while entering the park. The train dives off the mid-course brake and banks to the right and enters a massive helix. First, you swoop close to the water where the special effects come in. You then rise and get a good body chopper moment, for lack of a better word. This is where you feel like you're going to fly right into the rock structure for the entrance. Continuing through the helix, you enter another inline twist. After this element, the train banks to the left and enters the final brake run. Remember when I was talking about the dual load station? It comes back into play here. When running three trains through two sides, there will most likely be a train waiting on the brakes to enter. Going back to the example, train 1 dispatches and train 3 fills its spot. Then train 2 dispatches, leaving train 1 on the brakes. Train 2 is able to make it through the whole layout without stopping because there is a final brake run and a secondary block section called the transfer track. This part allows the trains to leave the closed circuit if they need to be worked on. Then train 3 dispatches. Train 1 fills its spot and train 2 comes straight back to the station. When train 3 is done, it will wait on the block until train 1 leaves. This process repeats. So it's not the most complicated system in the world. What's the big problem with it? Well, it comes mainly for guys. Just like on stand-up coasters, if you shift in a bad way during the ride, then there may be some discomfort and pain while sitting and waiting on the final brake run in the flying position. That's my biggest problem with this coaster. It may not be the most user-friendly. Compared to its predecessor model, the Vekoma Flying Dutchman, I definitely like B&M's take on it more. In my opinion, this coaster has a pretty strong layout. It has multiple inversions and some good forces to go along with it. It also has a good ride duration at around 2.5 minutes. Even though there may be some minor mishaps with comfortability, the trains and restraint systems are far superior to the older model. With all that being said, it's time to wrap up the video with a pro and con list. First off, I have to take off points for comfortability. Other than that, the coaster was outstanding and it exceeded my expectations. The layout was really fun and forceful. The pretzel loop has to be my favorite inversion of all time on any B&M I've ever been on. And the ride is just so beautiful. So for my final score on Manta at SeaWorld Orlando, I give it a 10 out of 10. In my eyes, this is probably the best coaster at SeaWorld. We will just have to wait and see what Icebreaker brings to the table. Thank you so much for watching this review of Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. Let me know what your thoughts are on the ride in the comments below. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing as I plan on making more content like this in the future. Until then, peace out.